The Miami Dolphins are among the hottest teams in the NFL, but still have to prove they belong among the elite. You all remember the famous Bill Parcells line, right? You are what your record says you are. That one. Does it still apply when your record is 8 to 7, but you got to that mark after losing 7 straight and then winning 7 straight? Are you still an 8 to 7 team? Or are you something more because you're 8 to 7 but in the middle of an incredible streak? And then, does it matter who you beat during that winning streak? And should it matter? All those questions apply when it comes to the Miami Dolphins as they head into the final two weeks of the 2021 NFL regular season because the bottom line is we still don't know just how good they are. We also still don't know whether they're a legitimate playoff team or just a team that got hot and took advantage of a soft schedule. No matter how you slice it, a seven-game winning streak is a seven-game winning streak and it's impressive regardless and, besides, the Dolphins could only play the teams on their schedule. It's not their fault if almost all of their weakest 2021 opponents were scheduled during this one stretch. The Dolphins winning streak, but no one, looking at you, Dolphins fans, should get insulted at the suggestion that the schedule played a part, maybe a big part, in the streak. Let's be honest, the streak began with a game against Houston that featured ugly performances by both teams and the Dolphins might not have beaten all that many teams that day. The December 19th game against the Jets was similar, though not quite as ugly, and the Dolphins also were lucky to win that one. The opposing starting quarterbacks during the streak have been Tyrod Taylor, Lamar Jackson, Joe Flacco, Cam Newton, Mike Glennon, Zach Wilson and Ian Book. So that's why you have national pundits express skepticism about how legitimate the Dolphins are as playoff contenders. Longtime NFL reporter Michael Silver asked after the six of the seven victories in the streak whether any six-game winning streak had even been less impressive, and then the Dolphins defeated the massively depleted Saints on Monday night. The flip side, though, is that we can talk all we want about how bad the Jets are, but they still defeated Tennessee and Cincinnati, and the Texans still have defeated the Titans and Chargers. So, again, a seven-game winning streak is a seven-game winning streak. Can Dolphins avoid repeat of 2020? But, opponents aside, is it possible that skeptics also look at these 2021 Dolphins and remember their last image of the 2020 Dolphins? The Dolphins were a 10-5 team when they went to Buffalo in their regular season finale needing simply to win to make the playoffs, but instead looked like a team that had massively overachieved and didn't belong anywhere near the postseason while they were getting blown out 56-26. Don't think for a second that 2020 season finale isn't at least a bit of a factor in how the Dolphins are viewed and how they need to produce a quality win to get that national stamp of approval. The Dolphins have beaten two teams this season that currently have a winning record, New England and Baltimore. And even then, the Patriots got off to a 2-4 start and the Dolphins escaped that game thanks to Xavier Howard's late fumble recovery. And the Baltimore game came on a Thursday night, which always heavily favors the home team. Beating Tennessee would be completely legit in the eyes of the national media and erase any and all doubt about the 2021 Dolphins. At least it should. A victory against New England in the regular season finale, now that Patriots have turned it around and are headed to the playoffs, would do the same. The bottom line, from this vantage point, is you don't win seven games in a row, regardless of the opponent, without being a quality team, a good team. But are the Dolphins more than that? Are they a very good team? Unfortunately, we simply don't know that yet. The next two weeks will provide that answer. Final Week 17 Injury Report, and what it means. For a second consecutive week, the Miami Dolphins have a clean final injury report heading into their game against the Tennessee Titans and the only issues affecting the roster will be COVID-related. The Dolphins had only three players on the injury report all week and all of them were listed as full participants the three days and given no game status designation, meaning all three will be available against Tennessee. The three players are guard, tackle Jesse Davis, knee, running back Philip Lindsay, ankle, and tight end Adam Shaheen, knee. The Dolphins got two players off the COVID-19 list Friday, wide receiver Albert Wilson and guard Solomon Kindley, which left four players from the active roster on the list. Those four are safety Brandon Jones, defensive lineman Adam Butler, wide receiver Preston Williams and nose tackle John Jenkins, and the Dolphins won't know until Sunday morning whether any of them will be available for the game. Given their contributions so far in 2021, it's clear Jones and Butler are the two most significant of the four, but head coach Brian Flores made it clear Friday morning they're facing an uphill battle to play, especially considering they didn't practice all week. That close to the game, we'll basically have to see how it goes, Flores said. But we'll take it day to day with those guys. If it was, Saturday, that would be different but it's the day after for the earliest after the five-day deal. Titans status. While not quite as fortunate as the Dolphins, 
the Titans also find themselves in pretty good shape in terms of injuries. Tennessee gave game status designations to only two players, defensive lineman Laurel Murchison, knee, and outside linebacker Derek Roberson, illness. Murchison was a full participant in practice Wednesday and Thursday before sitting out Friday. Roberson wasn't even on the injury report until Friday when he did not practice. Murchison has started four games for Tennessee this season, but he played only nine defensive snaps in two games over the past five weeks. Roberson has appeared in five games as a backup and has 1.5 sacks on the season. Star wide receiver A.J. Brown was a full participant at practice after sitting out Thursday with a calf injury and he's good to go for the game. In fact, Murchison and Roberson were the only Tennessee players on the active roster who were not full participants Friday. In terms of COVID-19 issues, wide receiver Nick westbrook Ikine came off the list Friday, leaving six Tennessee players from its active roster. The two biggest names currently on the list are wide receiver Julio Jones and linebacker Bud Dupree.